second conception chapel, where shortly they will pronounce the marriage vows before Almighty God and His church. I invite you to join in prayer with them and prayer for them. God will bless them on this day, the beautiful celebration of their wedding day, and that He will bless them with increasing love as they live out their vows every day in their married lives. Let us pray. Grant me pray, Almighty God, that these are your servants, now to be joined in the sacrament of matrimony. They grow in the faith they profess and enrich your church with faithful offspring. We pray this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Now please be seated for the scripture readings. A reading from the Song of Songs. Come, my lover, here he comes, springing across the mountains, leaping across the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. Here he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattices. My lover speaks and he says to me, Arise, my beloved, my dove, my beautiful one, and come. O oh, my dove, in the clefts of the rock, in the secret recesses of the cliff, let me see you, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and you are lovely. My lover belongs to me and I to him. He says to me, set me as a seal on your heart, as a seal on your arm, for stern as death is love, relentless as the nether world is devotion. Its flames are a blazing fire. Deep waters cannot quench love, nor floods sweep it away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all the mercies and knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. It is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interest. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
suffering, but not suffering because the other person makes life difficult for you, but suffering because in order to place the other person first, it means you have to die to what you would prefer very often. So that's the, the depth of this meaning. The ultimate example, of course, of that is Jesus on the cross. He loved us so much that he set aside all of his own self-interest. So this is the type of love we pray for you. You can have this now, and you can grow in this throughout your lives. And the second scripture reading from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, is used uh, in so many weddings because it is such a beautiful scripture describing for us love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous, love is not self-seeking, love does not put on airs. Love always puts the other person first, and it says in the end that love never fails. One particular uh, phrase in that scripture, especially applicable to a bride and groom, is love does not rejoice over wrongdoing. No one is more vulnerable to the other than a bride and groom, a husband and wife are to each other because you know so much about each other. You can only love your spouse in, in a very unique way because they are your spouse. Also, you can hurt your spouse in a very unique way because they are your spouse. So the scriptures both gives you the opportunity and challenges you to never rejoice when the other person does something wrong, but only to be there to support and to encourage. This church teaches us that you're calling now is to help each other grow in holiness and help each other become saints. The gospel reading which I just proclaimed describes to us the two great commandments. Always keep God first and He won't let you down and to love your neighbor as yourself. So again, putting the other person's needs above your own. So, and I know that the scripture means, in a special way for Claudia and Justin, as they describe it to me, that this wedding celebration today is, we call it their wedding day, but it's a celebration not just for them, it's a celebration for all of us, so that we all get to share in the joy of your special day today. So as we pray here in church, and as this continued tonight at the reception, it is a, a community of loving people, that's why we call it a wedding banquet. I know I take note that you are getting married on the 13th day of the month, in the 13th year of this uh, century and of this new millennium. So we'll bring new blessings to the number 13 for you. And it's easier for Justin to remember too, the 13th month, the 13th year. So it's, I'm just helping you out to a little bit, Justin. So it, it, is a, the, uh, it makes it a, a very special day. And we, as we celebrate to becoming one from what I came to learn of them and what I heard uh, from the other people who know them is that they've uh, been one in so many ways for a long time. Going back, uh, you told me you met in band class, right, in middle school, and played tennis together, ate together, studied together, signed up for classes together so that you could be together uh, throughout the time that you're coming to know each other. You told me that you even more magic. Uh, out there for Halloween. So in all the ways that so far in your life you have sought to become one. We do know this is a romantic couple. They told me the place they got married, a very special, not married, a place where they became engaged, a very special place uh, on Truman Campus uh, around the lake, right? Around the lake there. And so uh, we can also, not just every couple prints in their program, the part about uh, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. So they, and you can have, they told me you're going to have Mickey and Minnie on top of their wedding cake. Is that right? So they have all these ways in which they express, express their affection in ways that are known in special ways to them and in ways that they are confident to express this to one another. But they have a deep understanding of married life and know that the richness of a married life goes beyond this romantic relationship. Although there's no reason not to stay romantically in love for the next 50 or 60 years or more, uh, I'm looking forward to being uh, invited one day to the Silver Wedding Anniversary. You can have one of your young friends uh, wheel me into that. I'd like to be there to help celebrate that with you. And you know to maintain this level of romantic love in your relationship will not happen without being very uh, faithful uh, to your commitment. I have uh, confidence that you will continue to grow in the ways that you need to die to yourself so that you can enrich the love of one another. You have beautiful examples in your parents that 
who stayed faithful uh, to their marriage vows. You had great instructions from a wonderful couple in our parish, Mark and Alicia, uh, who witnessed to you the richness of their own married life. Uh, your parents married, received, uh, blessed each other with the sacrament themselves. They told me one in the Sacred Heart Church, one in the Lady of Loretto Church. So you have these great examples of marriage commitment. I'm confident that you can do it too. And what we all want for you is uh, have the best marriage in the world you ever had. So I encourage you, as you have done to this point, in developing a relationship, continue to rely on one another, rely on your family and friends who are with you here today. Above all, rely on God. He won't let you down. You live out that gospel today. Keep God, keep God first. Love Him with your whole heart, your whole soul, your whole mind, your whole spirit. It will only enrich the way that you can love each other with the, the fullness of your heart. So, on behalf of everyone here, I congratulate you. We all promise to pray for you, and everyone looks forward to celebrating with you the rest of this day. So, I would invite the congregation to remain seated in silent prayer as the bride and groom and the wedding party stand for the marriage vows. My dear friends, we have come together in this church so the Lord may seal and strengthen your love in the presence of the church's minister and this community. Christ abundantly blesses your love. He has already consecrated you in baptism and now he enriches and strengthens you by this special sacrament so that you may assume the duties of matrimony and mutual and lasting fidelity. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Carly and Justin, have you come here freely and without reservation to give yourselves to each other in holy matrimony? Yes. Yeah. And will you love and honor each other as husband and wife for the rest of your lives? We will. And will you accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and His church? We yeah. will. Since then, it is your intention to enter into holy matrimony and join in your right hands to declare your consent before Almighty God and His church. I, Justin, take you, Carly, to be my wife. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. I, Carly, take you, Justin, to be my husband. Promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. You have then declared your consent before Almighty God in this church. May the Lord in His goodness strengthen your consent and pay you both of His blessings. God has joined and must not divide. Amen. As a further sign and seal upon these marriage vows, we now have a blessing in exchange of rooms. Lord bless and consecrate Carly and Justin and love for each other. May these rings be a symbol of true faith in each other and always remind them of their love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Carly, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Justin, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
now for the petitions. With many prayers and the wedding ceremony for the bride and groom, we also remember people not here present with us, with whom we are united in faith, hope, and love. To each petition, please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, may our faith and the love God has for us be expressed in our love for one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, may all lands that suffer violence and injustice find peace and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the homeless, and for those who are unemployed, may our care and concern for those in need be a sign of God's love. We pray to the Lord. For the protection and sanctity of human life from conception until natural death, may all people be treated with the dignity they deserve as God's children. We pray to the Lord. For our country and those who defend it, may our men and women who serve in the military be kept safe from all harm. We pray to the Lord. For all of our guests gathered here with us today, may they enjoy the warm company of family and friends and have safe travel on their journey home. We pray to the Lord. Lord for Justin and Carly, may they live long, blessed lives together. May their love grow stronger each and every day. And may they build a family rooted in faith and unconditional love. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those who have died, especially Neil and Donna Feeney, Megan Cravens, Wallace Pleszkowski, and all of, and of all present for this wedding, may they enjoy perfect happiness and total fulfillment in Life. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Deeply refined, do not be open to us. Lord, hear and answer these prayers we present before you today and all the needs and the depths of our hearts. Grant us all the strength and the grace to more closely follow your will for each one of us every day. We pray this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now as we offer our gifts to God for our
receiving bring over the offering made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of matrimony. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have forced the covenant of matrimony as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace, so that the change and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design, that while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their rebirth and baptism gives increase to the church through Christ our Lord. Through him, with the angelic, with the angels and all the saints, we sing him of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Church spread throughout the world. Bring it to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, the Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who died in their mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life. Praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. You have been with him in the year, O God, the mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we humbly pray to the Lord that on these his servants now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make them one heart and one in love, especially through the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. He is joined by his holy covenant. God, by your mighty power, created all things out of nothing. And when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, there might no longer be two but one flesh. Taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. For God you consecrated the divine matrimony by so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ in his church. For God the woman, woman is joined to man. Companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing, not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away in the blood. Look now with favor upon these your servants, joined together in matrimony, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down upon them the grace of the Holy Spirit. Pour your love into their hearts. They may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in daughter, partly, that are always part of the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her, so acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor, cherish her always with the same love of Christ as part of his church. Now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants, Hold fast to the faith, keep your commandments, made one in flesh. May they be blameless in all they do. With the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with the children, prove themselves to be virtuous parents. May they one day live to see their children's children. Grant, reaching at last together the fullness of years, which they hope. They may one day come to the light of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven, Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ has said, Your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. But now share with one another a sign of peace. God, the eternal Father, keep you with one heart and love of one another. 
children have solace in your friends and enjoy your peace with everyone. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day be received thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. May Almighty God bless you all.
shuttle run. It's the shuttle run. <laughs>